Now, I wanted to make a cabinet scraper, uh, much like a Stanley 81, um, with a taller back and a little bit larger bed, and then give it away. I thought this would make a fantastic one-day build, do it all in one day, make a video, and give it away. Um, but as you'll see, it didn't quite come out the way I wanted. So I started with a, a block of firewood, uh, white oak, uh, really nice stable piece for the sole. Uh, made it a little over a half inch thick so that it could uh, flex a little bit with moving over things. And uh, moved on to one of my favorite saws of all time, the uh, Rubo style frame saw. I made this recently and put a video out on it. It was a lot of fun. But it uh, really makes quick work uh, running through this white oak. It's about uh, five inches wide and uh, ripping a strip off of that. Then I can come in with a plane and smooth off all of the saw marks. And you can start to see those rays popping through. It's really kind of beautiful. It's kind of getting excited around this point. wanted to uh, shape the sole a little bit with rounded corners. So it's fairly easy to grab a, uh, a scroll saw or a, a small saw of this type and uh, cut off the corners. It's uh, actually really enjoyable to shape it like that. Then you can use a, a float or a file to uh, clean up the edges and take off the saw marks from that. Um, give yourself a nice shape. Time to move on to the handle for it. And I think this is where my problems kind of started. Um, I decided to hand draw the handle and uh, kind of go by eye. And really I should have uh, cut out a pattern and then mirrored it one side to the other. Um, but instead I uh, just decided to hand draw it. And it wasn't quite as nice as I wanted, but oh well. I guess that's more aesthetics. It probably would have still worked even with that. Then I can use my turning saw and uh, cut out that uh, line that was just drawn. Uh, or made this too out of uh, some old hacksaw parts and uh, bandsaw blade. A fun little project. But uh, after cutting it all out with the turning saw, I can come in with a chisel and uh, start to refine the shape. And I just kind of take it down to what uh, looks and feels okay on it. But uh, after the chisel, I can go on with a really heavy rasp and detail the shape until it, it actually feels good in the hand. And I'm constantly going back and feeling it and uh, going to town a little bit more. Then I'll come in with a finer rasp and, and, uh, and file and uh, smooth it down a little bit more and a little bit more and then with this very very fine file I can almost get a finished feeling but with this uh, Peruvian walnut I really need to go on to sandpaper to take out all the burrs. I uh, made this bow sander recently and I've been using it all the time now especially on handles really gives you a nice finished smooth surface even on uh, wispy woods like this. Uh, here's another problem I needed to secure this to the sole and uh, I decided to put about a 5 degree angle on it, but I should have put about a 10 degree angle on it. I think that's the only design issue with it. Next up I had to drill holes for the threaded inserts, and that was another problem in that uh, the markings for the holes were measured off of the wrong points because I was going a little too fast. But, uh, oh well. <laughs> uh, a little bit of oil on these threaded inserts allows them to go in a lot smoother. Uh, you get a, a little bit finer cut with it. If you're not careful, these can uh, twist and become a problem. You need to use a decent amount of force on them in order to work them down in. But uh, with a bit of patience, they go in. Unfortunately, I didn't have uh, patience yesterday when doing this. <laughs> but uh, let's glue the handle to the sole. It's a fairly straightforward process because I hadn't marked out where the mouth was yet. I decided to just uh, glue it in and that would determine where the mouth is. And uh, that actually worked out very well. I was uh, kind of worried that might mess with it, but uh, in the end it gives you a definite location. Here you can kind of see how the holes are off kilter and in the wrong places. And uh, yeah, oops. <laughs> But while that's drying, I can start working on the metal parts. Uh, there's a piece of metal that has to hold the blade against the handle. And I had a square that was not square. And figured that would make a, a good piece. I was able to cut off a chunk of that. And uh, once cutting it, I could then go through with a file and clean up the corners and make it smooth to the touch, make it uh, feel good. Then with the drill that I recently restored, was able to drill out an eighth inch hole and then a quarter inch hole to allow the bolt to slide through. The cutter was made of an old saw plate and I recently did a video on 
making scrapers um, out of an old saw plate. And this is basically the exact same thing because it's just a, a scraper that goes inside. After cutting it out, you need to go through and file everything smooth uh, and give it a little bit of shape. Uh, there needs to be a 45 degree curve, uh, 45 degree angle on the back of it. After shaping it and uh, cutting it, uh, you can sharpen it. And I did a video also on uh, sharpening and using a scraper plane recently. So that uh, that is a, a project to be covered in another video. But uh, once it's glued, we can actually go back and cut out the mouth on this. And I started by drilling several uh, quarter inch holes all the way along the mouth to remove the majority of the waste. And then I could come in with a chisel and uh, clean out everything. I could use the handle to actually be a registering surface to uh, cut down uh, so it maintains the same angle all the way through the sole. And then come in from the other side and clean out the waste. The uh, fatal flaw on this whole project was when I flipped it over and started cutting out the mouth from the other side. And uh, here I am cutting from the wrong side with the angle so that there is no support behind the blade. Oops, oh well, <laughs> that's how you learn, I guess. But I could use a, uh, a float that is designed for cutting out the mouths on planes to uh, give it the final finish. Uh, really nice uh, tool. I was able, I was given it by a friend a while ago and loved it. So here we can do the testing on it and uh, here's where I start to notice the problems. It's not cutting as it should be and then when you get going, it actually chatters. So I can set it here and in a moment you'll actually hear it vibrating as it cuts through the wood. Oh well. So I wanted to make a cabinet scraper like a Stanley 80 or more like a Stanley 81. And uh, I was really coming along and nice and it was going fairly well and uh, doing what I wanted, and then I accidentally measured one of the holes in the wrong place. Not a huge issue, it was about an eighth inch off. So I could still keep going. Uh, but then the shape of the head didn't quite match up with what I had intended. Yeah, that's a looks thing, okay, I guess I can get along with that. Um, but then I went and cut the mouth wrong, and I cut out the wrong side. And I figured as soon as I saw that I cut out the wrong side, that probably just killed this project. <laughs> it uh, was not going as well as I wanted. So I tried it out and sure enough the thing just chatters away. Uh, there was nothing supporting the back of the blade. It just wobbled through the wood. So um, that is uh, trash now. So yeah, not everything's perfect and sometimes you just have to uh, cut it into it. Uh, I was really wanting to build one of these in one day um, and then give it away at the end, uh, but this isn't worth giving away, so I'm not going to do that. But such is life, and I figured this would be a good learning experience. Um, I was trying to do it all in one day and kind of rushing through it, and that kind of led to the problems that uh, are why this is going in the junk pile. So don't always push to complete the project. It's not always worth doing that. I really wish if I had taken my time and done this over about two days, um, it would have been great and been a wonderful experience. Um, problems with the actual design of it really aren't many. It was mostly just a momentary error that I was rushing through it and didn't quite think through everything. So that's where this is. And uh, I'll be making one in the future and hopefully be doing a giveaway here soon. I was hoping to do a one day build and a giveaway but uh, we'll have to do that some other time. So I hope you like this. It was a good learning experience for me, and I hope it was for you too. I would love to hear your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. What would you have done differently? Would you like to see me make an actual cabinet scraper in the future, and uh, hopefully one that works? If so, let me know in the comments below. If you did like the video, uh, please hit like and think about subscribing. I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are phenomenal and a huge encouragement to me. Even when things go wrong, um, you're there for me, so thank you for that. If you did like this video, also feel free to check out one of my other videos. You might find something you like there. And until next time, have a wonderful day.